Dude, we're doing three to 500 miles a day. Oh, no! Oh. Anything can happen in that amount of time. I never felt comfortable at all. There's so many things going through your head. I need, uh, I need help out there, so I was losing it. We human beings, we have emotions, and if we didn't have emotions, we wouldn't be racing. <laughs> There's a lot of times you're going over blind rises, and you can go wide open if you want. It, it could be all over. You've got to be able to manage your story. You've got to be able to manage your race. All the goods, the bads, the wish I could have done this or done that. <laughs> and I can't reiterate the importance of having a team around you. Those are the people who are going to pull you through it. The car is challenging. It's the hardest race in the world. A lot of hard work, but we're here. It's been a gnarly, gnarly venture since Dakar. Just everything going on, it's, it's been crazy. And Once again, thank you, Cameron, for hosting this amazing event. We thank you all. I'd say the hardest part on the whole experience was the pressure was on from the beginning. Man, it was just the most challenging racing mentally I've ever done. The pressure started building. I mean, the high levels of stress that I was going through, it's tough, man. I've never been in that situation. Okay, day two. So our special is 300, I think, 60 kilometers a day. You know, just trying to stay focused and get the job done. I've always been sort of maybe a bit pessimistic when it comes to racing. We have a stage, we have an objective, we have a goal, and we have to basically execute on those points. Uh, these drivers and, and co-drivers are at the top of their game naturally, but if you're not mentally strong, the Dakar is just going to eat you up. Lack of sleep is probably the hardest thing anyone on the Dakar experiences. The heat's always going to be difficult, but you can you can adjust, but lack of sleep, it's dangerous. You've got to find a way to be resilient. He put head into something, so he just uh, stretched the ligaments a little bit, uh, but it's definitely important to keep everybody in the best health for, for such a long race. Just for Dakar in general, like my, I would say the gnarliest thing is just being in places that we don't have in the United States. I don't care if you're in a trophy truck, a UTV, a quad motorcycle, no tracks, no nothing, of just crazy looking terrain and feeling terrain in the car. Uh, it is an epic day, crazy mountain climb with rocks, lots of dust. So we ended up third for the day, but the crazy thing is we're leading Dakar Rally right now, so we are first overall in category. So let's uh, keep pushing. I mean, I felt from day one that I had a chance to win. I felt confident the whole time. The car was working great. The Can-Am is running phenomenally. It's, it's incredible how tough these machines are. So another day and we're, uh, we're moving forward. Today is a good day uh, with Armand Gunde Special. The feeling today was better. Uh, the team did a great job on the race car and it just felt like everything was clicking. I think we lost a total of 12 minutes today. But overall, the car's still working great. Uh, it looks like we're still sitting third overall, only three or four minutes out of the overall. But uh, man, we're gonna take it, and we're gonna keep moving forward. Uh, it's been good so far. So this first half of the race has been uh, great for us. We've put ourselves in a great position. Uh, so a long way to go. And so this is kind of the point where the race kind of starts almost. You know, at the halfway mark is when it started going like, man, this is crazy. Like, we're doing everything we're supposed to do. The car is in great condition. It's like, we just got to keep focused. What happens in the race happens in the race. There are a lot of unknowns, but there were a lot of unknowns last year in Peru. It does leave a few butterflies in the stomach. We're uh, second place right now. We, uh, we have six of the most grueling days ahead of us. And uh, it's going to be an adventure. We're going to do whatever we can to get this thing up front. I think the car is a chess game. I think you got to play the right moves. It's trying to figure out what every other driver is going to do is tough. You know, the first day Ronaldo had the, the steering shaft break in his car and put him a couple hours down. And then Gerard had some tough days uh, that put him down, you know, leading him to the halfway mark. You know, the, as a team, we all went together and then they were going to help support me. Just to have them around in case of a problem, that they could be there to help and to just be in the sand dunes together. And that's where your team supporting you around can keep you level and can sort of guide you. I absolutely think that it's, it's a team sport and it, it, it's very difficult to win alone. 
we are fighting for the victory, the team victory, so uh, we are helping each other. We came in today as a team and it works. We had all three cars together all day, uh, we pushed phenomenally hard, it all worked out, so I really just got to get up to the two teammates for uh, today's stage. We just had a plan of what we were going to do as far as either waiting or catching me and then pushing from there. There's a reason all the big cars and all the big teams have multiple cars. You know, having Gerard and Varela, both those guys supporting us, like, you know, I'm very grateful for that. Okay, attitude, roll, two, five, great. Today our goal uh, was uh, go front Cassie and show the, the lines in the dunes. And this place, I don't, I don't see the dune cut. And then you see, you see the result, no? Oh! You know, I can steal a good moment, you. Gerard was leading me through the dunes and he was pushing hard to make it so, you know, the pace was fast in the sand dunes. Hey! Stop for 30, 45 seconds, make sure they're all good and healthy and no uh, medical issues. And uh, they gave us a thumbs up to just keep pushing. Gerard and Oman, they deck our legends. You want to have that team gelling together. You want to have them be able to pick each other up. So that's for me very important. When you're, you know, you're representing USA in a place that somebody from America has never won. Uh, I, you know, I had that pressure deep down inside. In the last half the race, those guys did a phenomenal job. I think it's amazing for that opportunity to get those guys to help. It's not over. Th this race is so grueling. Every mile there's something new, and uh, we, we still got a long way to go. All right, day 10, start marathon stage. Um, everything is good, so we just got to keep pushing at this point. We're going to uh, try to have a solid day, uh, minimize mistakes, and uh, let's get to the marathon stage. So uh, Sean and I don't have to work on the car ourselves. Get the thing back to the uh, final stage. Good luck, boys. Hammer down. I mean, I don't really believe in karma, but at that point, I for sure was going like, dude, somebody's going to jinx this, or I'm going to jinx myself, or, you know, I'm going to let myself down. No American's ever won it. I was losing it, like I was just way overthinking the race. Uh, we're going to start playing team strategy. I need, uh, I need help out there, so we're going to do whatever we can, man. Two more days of this rally and it's all over. Are you going to win? Are you going to lose? Is the car going to break? Are you going to get lost? Is Sean going to get us lost? Is, is something going to happen? Are we going to get hit by T4? Are we going to, you know, there's so many things going through your head. One day to go and uh, my car is in great condition. This Can-Am has been phenomenal and I'm very uh, blessed to be driving it. Oh, we're alive! <laughs> now it's real. Oh, now it's real. It's getting there. Oh, nice man. Work. Oh, good. It's a good day. We just uh, stuck with our teammate. We didn't push hard, but we pushed hard enough to just keep our lead uh, where it was. So, one more day of racing and uh, let's get this thing wrapped up. You look at it going like, ah, oh, every goal, everybody wants to win, and it's never happened, and like, here I am, year two, thinking like, something's gotta go. Okay, attitude, roll, two, five. I think Dakar can change lives. It can launch careers, it can break careers. It's about a passion, it's about racing Dakar. As much as I hate it, and I don't see the point of it, sometimes it's, it's part of me. For the drivers and the co-drivers, it's, it's the ultimate race. It's the ultimate, longest off-road race in the world. You win Dakar, you, you, you become a legend. Ah, incredible ride, man. I'm uh, <laughs> blown away. This is uh, every American dream. Uh, did Ricky Brabeck win? Yeah, yeah. Two Americans on top, and I'm, uh, I'm blown away, man. Just an epic experience, and I'll, I'll never forget it for sure. Oh, dude. <laughs> awesome, dude. Thank you so much. Man. Oh my happy God. birthday! Yeah, happy birthday! Yeah. This whole thing has been an unbelievable experience and it's still settling in, so I'm uh, just blown away. It's such a massive team effort and everyone behind it. Uh, whew, it's a train rolling into town, so I'm uh, very blessed for the opportunity and uh, ready to get home to my family. No American has ever won a category uh, in the history of the car, so and now we got two of them. My buddy Ricky Brabeck won as well. To me, it's amazing. Casey Gurley! The national anthem for the U.S. has never been played on the podium and uh, played two times. Yeah, we did. I'm definitely glad I took this journey. I think for the rest of my life, I can reflect on what happened. What do you think, guys? Is it crazy? Whether I go back or not, or whatever happens in the future, I think the things that I've done in my life. Hey, Evan, do you want to go inside? Let's go inside. For myself, like my kids, like showing the challenges that you have to go through to uh, get to the top. Like, first you can't be a quitter, 
And then if you, you know, if you don't try to challenge yourself, you're never gonna get better.